What's up, everybody? Hey, Sherry. Hey, Aubrey. Yeah. I'm back. Welcome, guys. Okay, and we're back. You know, I called, we called the cable company and we have, uh, we signed up for the, the fastest internet that was possible, possibly available. They don't, oh, wait a minute, is it, I think it might've been my, uh, hold on guys, I know what's going on. Now it should be better. Is this better? Okay. I'm back. Hey, everybody. I think it was the connectivity issue with my, uh, my Bluetooth devices, with my, um, with my uh, earpiece. All good? All right. Hey, Kathy. Oh, Kathy's here too. Uh, I've been busy, Sherry. I've been busy. Work, uh, kids, family, you know. I've been meaning to make a video. I've been meaning to uh, come live every day. It just, it wasn't happening. I don't know. But uh, I got a case of chicken today, and uh, I decided to um, to put. I got two cases of my uh, my quart jars. Hey, Lori. You know I don't know how this is gonna work. This is kind of uh, if you guys you guys can't see me and. Uh, this okay it's kind of tough being so tall you know the angle you got to get that angle so I got a, I got a 40 pound box of chicken chicken breasts and this is a uh, 24 quart jars wide mouth quart jars guys and I have my uh, this is my 30 quart pressure canner I got it uh, I just put the water in I put about two three inches of water in and I just turned the, the fire on medium just to start getting it warm And I figured this could be a tutorial and you guys' comments can be uh, for people that watch it in the future as a tutorial, you guys' comments could be kind of like, uh, they could re-watch re the, the chat and see all the tips you guys provide and see me doing it uh, visually and read your tips and comments and uh, we could make a nice tutorial for anybody that wants to start canning. This is my second time canning. For everybody that uh, doesn't know my first time I did not record it um, so this this here we go so they come in 10 pound 10 pound bags we have four 10 pound bags. I got my, uh, my salt. But what I want to ask you guys is, oops, where's the measuring spoons? Can somebody, let me, Hey Ron, thank you. 
Yeah, I'm raw packing, Terry. Don't turn on the stove until the jars are in the canner. Okay, turning it off. Stove's off. You, Sherry, you never use salt. I, I think salt is optional. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of salt. Just a little bit. Well, for the, anybody, Ron, do you use salt? Anybody here, Kathy, do you guys use salt? Do you put the salt in uh, first or do you put it on top of the chicken after you place your chicken in there? That's what I was wondering. You know, I've got several kinds. I have sea salt. I have uh, pink Himalayan salt. Kathy says yes, and put the salt on top. Okay. On top? Okay. I don't have canning salt. I should have bought canning salt. But I don't have it. On top, Susan, okay. Let me take a few steps back here. I wanna see the trajectory, see if I can get in here. I have another question. Um, can I put the breasts in whole? Or do you guys recommend cutting them? I'm, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do them whole. Last time I, I did them whole, it was, uh, I don't think I, I, you know what, Ron, you are something else. I was, I was thinking, I was, should I use the bullion? Should I not use the bullion? I said, nah, let me go with salt. I was really contemplating using bullion. I'm gonna go with the bullion. This time, I used the sea salt for the first the seven quarts. <laughs> What's up, brother? Canning salt or kosher salt? No iodine in that. Okay, so iodine salt is is no good. Okay. Good to know. So let's get on with it. Let's start. Uh... Okay, I'm excited. Whole if you have wide mouth jars. Yeah, I'm just going to leave them whole. I didn't bother prepping. I've been good, brother. Thank you. Hope all is well with you too. Hope is all all is well with all of you. I got my vinegar. I actually have a little. Uh, I got my paper towels right there with a little uh, with a little cup of vinegar. All right, I'm gonna start regular. You might have to, to cut the chicken. Yeah, I have wide mouth. These are all wide mouth. That's all they had actually is wide mouth. So I have all of my jars of wide mouth. I have 12 cases of the quartz. I gotta put them to use. So let's see, I guess, how many jars, um, 40 pounds of chicken breast require. This is the kit I bought on Amazon. It's got just your basic, your basic stuff. Let's do it. Put some vinegar in your water so your jars don't get cloudy. Okay. 
All right, so I'm going to get out of the frame just for a few minutes while I uh, while I do this canning. I'll keep talking so we can hang out. I put my gloves on. So it looks like two of these giant breasts per uh, per jar. I might have to cut some of them because I know it's a. I don't think two is going to fit. So some of the breasts are smaller, some are bigger. So I gotta do, I gotta kind of do a big one and a small one per jar. Okay, so it looks like six jars, five and a half jars for 10 pounds. All right, so I have enough jars. I know some of you must be cringing the fact that I'm not using the funnel. I, I mean, I'm not crazy about the idea of not using it either. I'd rather use the funnel, but these are just too big. Um, now I know from now on I'm going to just cut them a little bit. I'm going to have to wipe them pretty good with vinegar. Okay, so here's a nice small one that I can fit with one of these big ones here. Beautiful.
two. And nice. Okay, 20 pounds down. Six, nine, 11 jars for 20 pounds. Okay. So at this rate, we have enough jars. Some of these are huge. Oh, you know what? Let me change the trajectory of that camera. I think it's maybe too low. I want to read some comments while I'm here. Thank you, Ron. Doing a fine job. Thank you. Add vinegar to the can or water. Okay. I'm going to add, how much vinegar should I add to the can or water? Cut up some to finish filling the jar. Good idea. Okay. Nice looking chicken. Thank you, Terry. You need a small dish of vinegar. I got that, Sherry. I got a little, uh, little souffle cup filled with vinegar and the paper towels are ready. Sorry guys, still getting used to this. You're on this side, okay. Let me go to the bottom, quarter up, splash it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Smashing them bubbles like a man, yes sir. Couple of tablespoons of vinegar in the pot, okay. Thanks guys, I'm gonna glove up. Round two. Let's see, how's the trajectory here? Okay. Looks okay. A little coffee. Need I say more? I'm a lucky man. Okay. Gloves on. Small one and a big one, perfect fit. Let's see. I'm thinking this is gonna be like so perfect. Yeah. Oh my god. Beautiful. Holy Moses. Look at this thing. This is a one breast wonder, they call it. I gotta show you this one. Oh God, it's time to go in the jar. <laughs> All right, here are some two nicely sized ones. Okay. 
So that is 30 pounds. We're going on our last 10 pound bag. All right, so I got four more halves left, and I think I should cut these up like um, somebody mentioned. Sorry, I forgot who. Just to fill in the jars. Let's do half for now. I just sharpened this knife too, thank God. Nice. Perfect. That was a great idea, guys. Thank you very much for that idea, for all the ideas, for all your help. You guys like my purple knife? Let's put this one here. Last one, last piece here, and yeah, let me take a little bit off. This one can go here. This one can go. This one up. Put that in here with that dinosaur breast. Okay. All right, so that looks good enough for now. So, be a girl up in the uh, restaurant industry, we were always taught to. Um, Kind of keep a clean station. Um, so, I mean, this may not look clean to some of you, but I can assure you, it's I've got a, I've got a pretty good system going on. So, boom, that's it. All the all the bags, the chicken came in, all the juice, everything's in here. This will go straight to the garage. I'm going to leave it here for now, just for production's sake. And now, what we'll do is. Let's drop the tripod down. Let's try a different angle, guys. Maybe we'll bring it in close. Okay. All right, let's glove up. 
and we'll uh, we'll get in with the vinegar and clean those jars up real quick. Should I um, seasoning first? I mean the uh, the the bouillon and then vinegar. I'm presuming. Just in case I get a little vinegar, I mean a little bouillon on the uh, on the brim, right? Bouillon first, okay. Now I remember reading the uh, the book, the instruction manual, which also contains um, many nice recipes that came with the pressure canner, um, the all uh, all American. That was uh, that came in the box. It said a teaspoon of salt. So I'm presuming the same amount of bouillon, right? Guys, let me get the empty jar out of here. Teaspoon? Yes, yes. Not a full teaspoon? Right? Okay, Rob. So we'll do a nice flattened level teaspoon. This is pretty exciting. Vinegar in canner. Okay, I'm gonna put the vinegar in the canner. This is bouillon powder, nor bouillon powder um, that I'm using. You can use salt. All right, now let's uh, vinegar up these jars.
there's a lot of um, slime and juice and just you know chicken matter that's coming off with this vinegar so this is a crucial step it seems I consider myself very 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 lucky to have um, all the experts just right here and I can ask questions um, live thank you guys thank you for being here I really really appreciate it Three more. Last one. Okay. Just use the sign before the... Oh, okay. Um, one more time, how much vinegar in the pot? Check it out, guys. Anybody? Vinegar in the, uh, in the pressure canner. How much should I put in there in the water? A splash? A slosh? Okay. So let me tell you a story about this vinegar, right? ShopRite, this is the supermarket. I don't know if you guys have ShopRites, but this is the local East Coast or Northeast. Um, I don't think they have any in like Florida or the Carolinas, but well, you do. Okay, cool. The ShopRite brand vinegar, I mean, it's not like, it's vinegar. Vinegar is, you know, I'm sure it's vinegar. 5% acidity. They had the Heinz. 5% acidity. This cost $1.99 for a gallon. The Heinz, I kid you not, was $4.85 for a gallon. 5% acidity. Same exact product. $1.99, the Heinz was $4.85. I couldn't believe it. Hold on, let me see. Sharon, I admire everyone that does this. I'm too nervous. I have never tried. Sharon, this is my second time doing it. Uh, the first time I did it, I had some chicken in my chest freezer. If you watch my video of when I got the new freezer, actually, I didn't document. No, I did document the new freezer. Anyway, I had some chicken that was in there from March, from when I did my initial uh, Corona uh, shopping. Uh, that was one of my first uh, preps as a professional prepper. Anyway, I said, let me can this. I think it was about 10 pounds. It, I got seven, I got seven quarts out of it. Okay. I canned it myself. I documented it. Uh, I never released it. I never uh, released the footage because I think it was a little, uh, but it turned out to be so super easy. It, I was so intimidated. I was so intimidated by it but it is so simple. It just becomes second nature. Just do it once. Just do it once and it's like, it's pretty easy. And anybody in here will help you. Everybody in here is wonderful, wonderful human beings. Cheaper at BJ's. Canning is a goal for me. 
Do it. Canning is awesome. You're welcome, Sharon. It's so easy. I kid you not. I was very intimidated by it. I bought the canner um, and it sat there for a while. It was just a prop. It was an ornament to make a video about. I wanted to use it, but uh, I waited a while, but I'm, I'm glad I did. I'm glad I'm using it now. And now let's put the, uh, the lids on, on all these jars. Let's turn the camera back down. Okay. Water bath canning. Yes, you're right. That is the, uh, I hear, well, I mean, I hear, I've never done it, but that's the easier method. Alright, we got four more after this. And then in the canner we go. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, 
Let's change the trajectory of the camera to um, let's see here. So since this is a 30 quart, um, it fits. God, I can't get this right. Okay. Let's do it like that. You know what, Kat? When I did it the first time, I didn't debubble and it turned out fine. I don't know. Maybe I got lucky. Maybe it'll get messed up this time. We'll see. But, okay, here we go. You know what? Let's do a cool, let's do a cool uh, shot of inside. Can we get in there? Let's see if... All right, nice. Look at the production, guys. Look at the production value here. thing is I can't see comments right now but once I put them all in I'll read the comments hopefully I don't make any mistakes while the phone is angled down like this you guys are like no stop no stop 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 <laughs> two four six seven okay seven Quartz, seven quartz on the first floor. And let's do some, some on the second floor. Six. Wait, can I fit more than seven? Is this possible? I don't think so. No, seven is it. So, 14 quarts is the capacity of this canner. Does this look okay, everybody? Anybody? Does this look good? I'll take that as a yes. Thank you, Ron. So, we're gonna... So my wife's in here right now with me, guys. She's off camera. She's preparing some bottles for little Sammy. You know how mad she would be if I just flipped the camera around right now? She's like, please don't. All right. Ron says hi, dear. Hi, Ron. <laughs> Sherry says hi. Hi, Sherry. Kathy says, do it, turn it around. Oh no, <laughs> you don't want to see me like this. <laughs> she said, you don't want, well, you guys are. All right, so the uh, Lori says hi. Harvey says hi, everybody says hi. Cat, Lori, Sherry, okay. Buggy, Susan, everybody. Says, everybody says hi to the missus. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Okay, so let's center this guy. Hold on. So I'm going to center it on the burner as best I can. Now, crazy, crazy thing. I didn't think this was going to be this big. 
Now, I watch a channel that I like to watch. Um, well, obviously, I watch a channel that I like to watch. But there's a channel that I watch that I enjoy very much uh, called... Oh, yeah, I forgot. Something Farms. Guildbrook Farms. It's a, it's a woman, and her husband runs the camera. She does a lot of canning. They have a pantry, tons and tons of canning videos. Anyway, that's I just came across it one day. And she has an All-American 921, a 21 quart. And she said, the reason I chose the, uh, the All-American brand after tons of research is because um, the dual, um, it's got the weight and the valve. So if the weight fails, if you lose the, the weight, you still have the valve. And some other reasons that she said. So I said, okay, she has the 921. When I went on, I went on eBay because I couldn't find it anywhere else when I bought this. Um, I went on eBay, I searched All American 921, and then they had a 921, there was a 925, and a 930. I said, ooh, 930, you know, uh, I'm, I'm a big guy. I'm about, I'm six foot seven, about 330. So I've, I'm just like, I don't know. I get things that are a little bigger. I go for the next step. Big, I don't know, everything's kind of big with me. So I wanted to get a bigger um, uh, pressure cooker. So I, it, cause, so it would suit me, I guess. I don't know, it's this thing I have. Um, so I got the 930. But look, look, guys, I could have been in some deep stuff. I can't even begin to tell you how scared I was the first time I tried to do this. Look, you guys see right here, the, the microwave? So when I put it over the burner, I center it, not even my finger. I can barely stick my finger in there. So cutting it close, I almost got the 940, the 40 quart, but they didn't have any in stock. And it was extremely expensive. I mean, this was, this was pretty expensive, but the 940 was, whew. It was like uh, almost a thousand dollars, I think. It was like eight hundred, or something in that price range. Anyway, so did I do this correctly? Yes, I did. Okay, let me just make sure. Nope, I did it incorrectly. See that notch right there? There's a notch right here. That notch has to where is it? That arrow. There's that arrow. That arrow and that notch are BFFs. They belong together. They gotta, they gotta keep them together. So let's turn that around. Okay, so arrow and notch. Okay, the arrow and the notch are right here, right above one another. Beautifully fit. Oh, you know what? Almost forgot an important step, guys. You gotta put a little bit of oil on the. Uh... This doesn't have a gasket, ha! Huh? That was reason number two 
That was reason number two that the uh, young lady from Gilbrook Farms says she likes the All-American models so very much is it has the dual, you know, the weight and the gauge and no gasket. It does not come with gaskets. It does not need gaskets. It does not require gaskets. All you do is put a little olive oil, just the slightest little coating around the brim and that's it. You never have gaskets drying up. You don't have to keep extra gaskets, order gaskets. So, oh, thanks, Ron. Sorry, guys. I'm on my phone right now. Seven. Good to see you, too. His contacts are, who has a All-American? FS, Gromad. You got an All-American? Nice. Yeah, this is pretty awesome. I'm very happy with it. All right. So I got the Costco olive oil. And let's get a little, just a couple of drops is all you need. And then there's just inside right here, just a, um, you don't even want it to be really runny. You just want it to have a wet look and that's it. And that's not coming from me. That's coming from the uh, instruction manual from All American. Um, they said just like that, just the wet look is sufficient. Okay, I think that's good. Okay. I believe I can take my gloves off. So this has six, um, you know, I don't know what these are called, oh, wing bolts, wing nuts, wing bolts, six of them. And what you're supposed to do is, you don't tighten them at first. This is what I got from the, um, oops, from the instruction manual. You just want to get it so they don't fall down. So it's holding itself up. See, I'm not tightening. It's just there. Get all six of them up there. Okay. So there's no like slack, you see? None of that. You don't want no play. You want it just right there. Tight enough where it's not gonna. Okay. And when they're all like that, you gotta get two opposite sides, okay? and give it a turn, like, no, not a full turn, a quarter turn, quarter turn. I have to access this one. Oops, okay. Quarter turn, we're doing a little, not even a quarter turn. These are an eighth of a turn.
Okay. That's all she wrote. Now, there are 14 quarts of chicken breast inside of this All-American 930 model pressure canner. Now, all right, we're going to we're going to fire it up. Okay. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Ron. Yeah, he was crying. He's been crying for the last hour or two. Thank you, Susan. Oh, wait. Congratulations. FS on the new baby. So this, uh, there's this little valve right here. Okay. So this is a pressure gauge. There are two gauges on this model to determine or to keep track of, or to observe your, uh, your pressure and to, Keep it at what you want. But from this valve, the instruction manual says when you have a steady, um, steady stream of steam for one minute. Was it one minute or was it? Okay, let us refer back to the book real quick. Now, it's not a steady stream of steam. If it's even just, I was looking for visual steam. And um, as long as it's just air, air is coming out, that's good enough. Oh, 10 minutes. You have to wait for it to come out for 10 minutes straight. 10 minutes for the steam stream. Okay. FS, those were the... Uh, they're both all Americans. Okay, 10 minutes, cool. All right. I gotta turn the heat down, it's hot in here. Okay. Oof. So look, we got Seven more. Seven didn't fit. We have 21 total and only 14 fit at a time. And we're going to have to do two rounds tonight. You will see the steam, then put the timer for 10 minutes. Correct. Um, you have to, um, for the person who is asking questions, or in the future, for people that watch this video, um, your elevation is a factor. I am in New Jersey, so we are under a 1,000. Um, our elevation is lower than 1,000. If you are above 1,000 feet, uh, sea level, well, sea level, which we are not. How can we be? The Jersey Shore. So uh, we're only here uh, just a few feet. I don't even think it's a hundred above sea level. So that is what affects your, okay. If anybody wants to take a screenshot, perhaps in the future, I don't know. This might be uh, 
handy for somebody, so I'll keep it here for a couple of seconds. Yeah, altitude, that's the word that was escaping me. Zero to a thousand and then above a thousand. Okay, altitude. Our altitude's pretty low here. Uh, I guess that's it. Oh, you got the weights. After 90 minutes, let the pressure come. To yes, Ron is correct. After the 90 minutes are up. So your altitude also is going to determine what weight you put it on. So it's 15, 10, 5. I'm in the 10 area at what I'm canning and my altitude. So this right here, once I get that 10 minutes of steam coming up and it's time to put the weight on there, that's the weight is what keeps the steam trapped in the thing, in the, uh, the pressure that makes the pressure. So once I get the steady stream for 10 minutes, I make sure it's the 10 hole and I just boop, plop it on there like that. And then that's when you start your 90 minutes or whatever the time is for whatever you're doing. If you're doing sauce, if you're doing jelly or jam or salsa or um, anything, seafood. So we're, for chicken breast, it's 90 minutes at 10 pounds. I tell you what, this is kind of addicting too. I want to do, I want to can everything. I want to can salmon. I want to can uh, sauces. Uh, I have a, a, a friend on here, a subscriber friend. Um, she cans cakes, the dry cans cakes and things like that. Oh man, Marsha. Oh man. I can't wait, but lots of meats. Yeah. That's the most bang for your buck. That's what's going to get you through everything. God forbid, you know. If they come, uh, if the blue helmets come or something happens, it's going to be that meat that sustains your family, sustains your, your, um, your household. Because you got rice, everybody's got buckets and buckets of rice. I'm sure everybody watching here probably got buckets of rice already and beans. But meat, meat is the tricky thing. Meat is how many can, like you got spam, you got roast beef and gravy, you got tuna, salmon, corned beef hash. What else is there? There's not that much. There's not that much, that many options as far as um, shelf stable um, protein meat for a SHTF scenario, whether it be SHTF or a disaster, some natural disaster, a hurricane, I don't know, a supply chain disruption. Or maybe, you know what, you don't have any chicken at home, uh, you feel like fajitas, and you don't want to go to the store, you've got peppers, you've got onions, you've got tortillas, but you got no chicken. Or maybe you got chicken in the freezer, you don't feel like thawing it out. Go crack a can of, uh, a can of your chicken, you know. That alone is worth it, I think. You know, you can even, you can even season it. You can, out of the 14 jars I have in here, I could have done four with the uh, bouillon and I could have done four with some, um, some Latin, Latin spices, you know, a little Sazon Goya, a little bit of the Goya, jamon, jamon, it's a ham seasoning, it's got like a smoky flavor. And uh, what else, where's my adobo? My adobo is always missing. Babe, where's the... Oh, I got it. With the adobo. Get done a few of these, and that would have been for, like, fajitas or for uh, any kind of Latin thing. If you want to make, like, fried plantains and rice and beans or something. 
Um, you could have done a few with like uh, lemon pepper, rosemary, stuff like that. It's up to you. So it's just like um, a fork. It's like a meal in a jar, or not the entire meal, but it's a starter to a meal. Thank you. You're welcome. Blankenship, I, I feel you. That's exactly why I bought this uh, pressure canner. I have a um, 17.3 cubic foot stand-up freezer, and I have a pretty big chest freezer. I bought that almost to, uh, like seven years ago. I don't remember the, 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 the cubic footage, but it's pretty big. Um, and I was afraid of a power outage. So that's why I kind of, um, everybody recommended canning. I have a prepping channel, but I don't can. I didn't can. People used to say, do you can, do you can, do you can? And I was like, no, you know, but if you got a prepping channel, you got to can. I mean, everybody should can. And I think it's great that everybody that's on here that hasn't canned, that's never canned, that wants to start canning, you definitely should. It's a, um, it's inexpensive to start. You don't need very expensive equipment. You can buy secondhand pressure canners. They are, you know, it's not like buying a secondhand car or, or anything. It's a very simple, it's a pot. It's a pot with a tight lid on it, guys. That's it. So secondhand ones, thirdhand ones, tenthhand ones, it's gonna be, it's gonna work. It doesn't have to be new. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be expensive. Just get yourself a canner, get some jars, start small, start big, but, but can. Um, it is a uh, insurance that, you're, that your family eats. No matter what the future brings, tomorrow is Saturday. I am going to hit the uh, restaurant depot in the morning. I'm going to get my daughters. I have a be careful where I lean. I have a four-year-old and a seven-year-old daughter. Um, they prefer thighs, chicken thighs and drumsticks. So I'm gonna get a uh, 40 pound case of each, 40 pounds of drumsticks, 40 pounds of thighs. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna can all those tomorrow. Hopefully you guys will join me, we'll hang out. Excuse me, my contacts are a little bothering me just a little bit and they eat a lot of soup my daughters you know you know where this also comes from is my uh my wife stays home she's got her my, she has her master's degree in some sort of business science something something i don't even it's like a medical business something but she has her master's degree i kid you not but she has not worked since she gave birth to our first child she stayed home she raises the kids she feeds them she teaches them she takes care of them and she cooks three square meals a day from scratch i mean you can crack a can of chef boy rd and my daughters will starve to death they'll just sit there and be like mm -mm, they won't eat it um my wife makes them soup from scratch uh, soup is one of their favorites they love soup <sighs> my wife makes this uh, Greek soup, it's um, orzo, ground beef, with uh, tomato broth. Yeah, orzo, ground beef, in tomato. Sometimes she uses tomato paste, sometimes pepper paste, like bell pepper paste. Sometimes a combination of the two. Sorry to be all up in here, guys. I'm just trying to read the... You know what? You're right. I didn't mean it like that. I, uh, when I was single, when people used to say something about raising kids and being a hard job, I, did, did it, did I, I used to think, well, well, you know, it's the kids, what's a big deal? 
But after we had our first daughter, even with the first daughter, after the first couple of weeks, I started thinking, oh my God, this is insane. It's nonstop, nonstop. You don't get a break. It's not like you go, you work, you get a 15 minute break, you get an hour lunch, you come home and you're done. Listen, being a mother is by far the hardest job, by far on the face of this earth. God bless all mothers. May God give you all strength. May God give you all sanity. May God bless you all, because it really is the hardest job in the world. I'd rather dig ditches in Tijuana in July for 16 hours a day than take care of these kids around the clock. I'm telling you, it is this tough. I tip my hat and I commend all mothers. My wife has a hard job. So when I said she did, doesn't work, I didn't mean she doesn't work. She works harder than I do. Uh, but she hasn't been on a, a formal job. So she takes care of the kids. So soup is something that I want to start canning because when SHTF does happen, um, what are the kids going to eat? I've got uh, mac and cheese. And mac and cheese is one of those things where it's uh, hit or miss. Sometimes they'll eat it. Um, most times they don't. But sometimes they do. They'll have, you know what though? They will have the occasional McDonald's chicken nuggets. They're uh, happy meals. They do uh, indulge in those once in a while. They like them. They like that. What else? Yeah, so soup and uh, chicken is the. So I've got beans. I've got three, four hundred pounds of beans. Yeah, two hundred pounds of black beans, two hundred pounds of pinto beans. I've got barley. I've got lentil. I've got a hundred pounds of barley, a hundred pounds of lentils. But these kids are not going to eat beans or lentils or barley. Uh, rice, they'll eat, they like rice. Uh, but with what, with what protein? They're not gonna have the beans. So they're not gonna eat tuna or spam. So this is mostly for them, for my children's sake. I'll eat anything. I really truly will. I'll eat cold corned beef hash out of the can and not even really complain. There's not much I won't eat. Uh, but for the kids, I want them to be comfortable. I want them to be happy. I don't want them to be traumatized or, or have a sense of, uh, you know, terror. I don't want them to be in any kind of terror. That's my job as the patriarch of this house is to uh, be the cushion, the buffer between any horror um, that may come our way, that may befall the nation, God forbid, our, our neighborhood, our family, our community, our state, God forbid, you know, our, I'll do my best. May God give us all strength to protect our families, our loved ones, and ourselves. We're going to do our best, but that's what we do. We, you know, we keep trying, we think, we prep what's the best, you know. I'd be fine with uh, just cans of tuna, rice, beans, corned beef hash, spam. I don't need anything else. I wish I could eat that now. I wish my, my wife didn't cook and say, honey, dinner's ready. Listen, I crack a can of uh, Hormel tamales or Hormel chili, make a little rice, and I'm fine. I'm happy. But, you know, I'm going to have dinner with the kids, got to set a good example, I got to eat my vegetables. So... Speaking of healthy, I gotta drink some water. I've been drinking coffee all day. I mean, all day I've been drinking coffee. So this big Berkey was originally supposed to be uh, kept downstairs in the dungeon, dismantled. I was never gonna put it together and actually use it. I was gonna just keep, um, kind of like put it together and say, okay, this is how it goes together. Um, this is how you prime the filters. All right, cool. And then I was going to wrap it back up, 
and leave it in the in the dungeon for a SHTF situation because we do have a few creeks, a few rivers um, within walking distance. It's about, I don't know, a 10 minute walk, maybe less, probably six, seven minute walk to get to a creek. But I started using it for uh, the tap water. I started filling it with tap water and it does such an amazing job. It does such an amazing job that I haven't put it away. You know, I don't know if you guys all have uh, Berkeys or not. But um, it really is something. It's really cool. And it changes the flavor uh, so, so profoundly. You know, New Jersey tap water, imagine, New Jersey tap water, North Jersey tap water, not even South Jersey. South Jersey is like, you know, a little more, less populated. Let's leave it at that, less populated. But, Text message. <laughs> oh, thank you, Marcia. Hey, Marcia, I didn't see you. How long have you been here? Oh, wait. I'm behind on the uh, big enough batch. I was behind on the comments. I was stuck. Alexa Pure. Okay, yeah, Kathy, that's like, uh, it's the same thing. Actually, there's a ton of, um, not a ton, but I found several Berkey um, style filters. It's called Gravity Gravity Filters or gravity filter systems. But the whole thing is, I don't know how you guys feel about the whole NSF, NSF certification. I mean, this seems to work fine, but there is a NSF certification that I'm sure you guys are all aware of that the Berkey does not have. Neither does the Mini Sawyer or the Life Draw or any of these items, uh, but I don't know. My wife keeps talking about the NSF certification. I asked their... Which I think they, um, to get the NSF certification, you have to filter 60,000, no, 6,000 quarts and keep that level of um, filtration or, you know, whatever cleanliness you are um, advertising, you know, whether it's 9.99 or 9.999 or 9.9999, you've got to, you've got to keep it. What is $98 for 10 pounds of beef brisket in my grocery store? Oofa. Susan Williams, it would be good. She makes it from scratch. Are we talking about the soup? Oh, okay. You guys want to see the wife make some soup? We can do that. We can do that. She actually makes little Sammy uh, baby food from scratch. Let me show you. It's in the freezer. So this is um, my wife's baby food that she makes for little Samuel. She's got a bunch of different flavors. She alternates. She uses um, only organic produce, fresh meat, veggies. Hold on, I think there's another. 
I think this may be her bone broth. She makes her own bone broth too from, um, I think beef bones. Yeah. She's got bone broth. This has bone broth in it too, but she'll do um, zucchini, squash, onions, garlic, I don't know, different things, different vegetables. She'll puree it. She'll do, um, I don't know what kind of, I don't think she uses meat. I think she uses just the bone, the bone broth. Okay, I'm gonna tell her. I think she'll be excited to do it. I don't know. I'm gonna tell her. Hun? Can you hear me? She said, shh, from upstairs. Sammy's sleeping. You can your own bone broth? I think that's impressive, bone broth. I think that's so cool. Um, very easy to make, not time consuming, yet simple, but people buy it, I guess, for um, convenience. But uh, it's something that our bodies really need and it's really good for you. So that's awesome. My wife's name is Barbara. Thanks, Marcia. What she's making can help with elderly folks too. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, that's true. That makes sense. It's soft, easy to get down, very, very highly nutritious, uh, easy to prepare. You know how she prepares it? She takes that little frozen ball and she'll just put it in her little, she has like a little stovetop um, skillet or she just microwaves it. She puts it in a small bowl Kind of like one of these that had the vinegar in. Should put it in one of these or something else. So we don't have steam yet. It's been uh, quite a while, but I guess you gotta wait a while. It is getting hot though. It is getting hot. Let's see. I just got a text message. Just got a text from Barbara. She said we should totally make a uh, baby edition video. So coming soon guys, I think we're gonna do it. Barbara, yeah. It takes at least 20 for mine. And it's smaller than yours, okay. They're excited there. Everybody's excited, I'm excited too. Anybody want to go down to the um, to the dungeon for a little bit? I got a pretty good score at uh, Dollar General yesterday. Yes. Okay. Let's go. You have to babysit your can or just real quick, Marsha, five minutes. Never go far from the canner. Okay. We won't go far. We're gonna go right down to the dungeon. I'll show you my score. Sherry's like, no. 
Look, it's going to take a minute. It's going to... Set up the tripod. So, a lot of people overlook these. Since the beginning of Corona, I have been finding these at Dollar General all the time. These antibacterial sprays. Grabbed a few more of these. You never, never, never guess what I found there, what they had in stock. Look at that. Look at that. Lysol, baby. I was blown away. I haven't seen this in almost 10 months, more. <laughs> almost a year. I've not literally seen this on a store shelf. Got three cans, that's all they had. Look at this, it's starting to come back. Antibacterial, antibacterial. Gonna make a little fire starting kit. Some fire starters. And that's it. That was it, just a minute. I said just a minute. We're going back up now. We're going back up. Tripod is tall. Sorry guys, you're up in the air right now. Okay. All right, let's go check out the, are we steaming? Nope, nothing. Stocked up on Lysol spray last January before everyone else did. Hey there, Cindy. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Is that okay? That's pretty, uh. That's pretty crafty of you, Ron. That's actually a good idea. You need germs to build the immune system. Very true. But it's good to have, you know, uh, listen, I haven't gotten sick since, I want to say November of last year. I used to get sick every winter, you know, I'd get the flu or a nasty cold. Apple cider vinegar with apple peels and cores. Nice. Nice. But I didn't get sick yet. Corona came, people were supposed to get sick. I didn't get sick. I haven't I didn't get my regular cold that I got. I don't know how you guys how you guys have been doing. I you guys hear it bubbling? You guys hear the water boiling?
Hey, Stuart. Thank you, brother. Let's see. Susan 529. I don't wear a mask and go about my business. Not sick. Rock on. Rock on. That's the way to do it. Pocahontas says vitamin D and Lipsomol vitamin C. Kathy hasn't been sick either. Ron's doing good. Well, Ron is a uh, Ron's Ron's got the Alamo there. Ron is Ron's rocking. I know Ron. I know you're good, Ron. Ron, when um, when the president was when he made a speech a few days ago, was that kind of sort of in uh, your region? Would you say? Yeah. I gotta keep up with these. Ballard family. Our whole family has COVID, but almost done with it. Okay, rock on. There you go. Now you your immune system is even stronger than it was before. You guys are lucky to get over it. Bless you. That's awesome. No, he was southwest. You're northeast. Okay. So you're up near uh, near Bear, near Bear Bearistan. Okay, so the water's starting to come to a more. Okay, I got steam. So 10 minutes from now, or does it have to be like rocking for 10 straight minutes? Please, somebody answer that. Does it have to be like a locomotive like for 10 minutes? Or is it like, you know, look, it's coming a little bit. Or can I, can I do 10 minutes from now, put the, put the weight on? Hard stream, okay. Susan says, I get over walking, uh, getting over walking the pneumatic. I don't know what that is. Walking pneumatic. Mr. Ziegler in the house, hello, hello. From Denver, Colorado. Beavers Bend. Oh, pneumonia. Okay, okay. Blankenship, is that for real? I've seen somebody recommend that in another live stream. He recommended it a few times, and somebody else in the stream said, it's a dewormer. 
like kind of like, oh, what is this guy kidding? This is now the second time I'm hearing about it is from you. And I don't think you're a, uh, you're a troll. So now I'm intrigued. Wow, okay. Okay, I'm going to look into that. Has nothing to do with worms. Okay. I'm with you there, Marsha, 100%. All this that, that that's happening in this world, all this stuff is... Oh, I feel bad for the people that fall for it. The, the hysteria, that's, that's like, my heart goes out to these people. I don't understand. The hysteria, how people fall for it. Uh, the gauge isn't on there. Oh, the gauge? Oh, yeah, let's get up on the gauge. No, the gauge is not moving yet. Gauge won't move until you put your weight on. All right. Oh yeah, that's true. So the steam is escaping, so it won't the the it's the psi's won't increase while the steam is escaping. That makes sense. Wait, somebody, did somebody say I can start the timer? FS Gromad said we can start the, uh, the countdown to 10 minutes. What's the verdict, everybody? A pop-up button? No, Marsha, there's no pop-up button. You mean the, not, not, not the wait, right? You know what, Scott? I was uh, I would think the same thing, but the rules are you have to let it build pressure, not pressure, but let the steam build up and um, have a steady stream just escaping like that for 10 solid minutes before you put your weight on. So that's just a, um, that's one of the golden rules. I don't think that's one of the rules that you can really play with or else I would definitely just Put the weight on, let the pressure build right up, and boom. But you gotta, you gotta be patient, I guess. Your wife is amazing. 
Wish she was my neighbor. You know what? She is amazing. She's not much of a neighbor with the kids. The kids consume every waking moment of her. So she was, you know, for Christmas, she got the neighbors uh, big boxes of uh, Ferrero Rochers. Um, but as far as socializing goes, she doesn't socialize with me. The kids literally eat, eat every minute of her day and night. She wakes up. I'm getting ready for work. And she's like, can you please watch the kids while I take a shower? You know, or else she, she will not be able to take a shower. So, of course, I never say no. I watch the kids. I do what I can. I, I'm not saying I do much. I wish I could do more, but... It's pushing out the air inside the canner. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Makes sense. You could blow a jar if the water temperature isn't correct. I did not know that. Right on, guys. You guys are awesome. Everybody in the future that's watching this, you are very, very fortunate. Not because of me or what I'm doing. It's because these people in the chat Read the chat, hit the live chat button, and read along. Everybody in here is a professional pressure canner, water bath canner. They're very, very, very good at putting food by, okay? Take their advice, not mine. I'm just the, uh, I'm just the middleman. I'm just creating the, I'm, I'm the host. I'm the host between everybody that needs a lesson and the teachers. The teachers are in the chat, okay? For people in the future that are watching this. I need some contact solution. Jeez. Okay. What's up, Autotron? Scott Ziegler says, I have done some canning, peaches, green beans, yams, I'm thinking that's yams, but no experience with pressure canning. So, okay, so you've done water bath canning. Oh my gosh, you are set. Autotrons in Hawaii, lucky, 8.21 p.m. What time is it here? It is 1.21 a.m. in New Jersey, Autotron. 1.21 a.m. Okay, so we're exactly five hours apart. Exactly, to the minute. Sherry, 121. Okay, we're in the same Eastern Standard Time Zone. I've got the ball canning book. I wonder if I need to prep. After all, the island has fruit trees. That's true. I would still prep. Maybe just, you know, rice. Um, because the thing with the fruit trees are, is when a situation does happen, when you guys are hit with an adversity, say, I don't know, anything, just think of something where maybe there's a grid down, or imagine everybody on the island is going to think, ah, oh, fruit trees, and go and... Just pick them bare. They will be barren in a day, maybe two. So. Protein, yep.
I heard it gets pretty rough in Hawaii, like the rough areas of Hawaii are, are about as rough as they come. Yeah, it's late, but I'm off tomorrow and uh, we're having a good time. Let's see. And shoot you in the process. Typical Marsha. You're right. You're absolutely right. Marsha does. Marsha knows. Prepping is a must. Absolutely. Absolutely. We got less than three minutes, guys, on the timer. You hear it hissing? Susan, I, I haven't read it yet. I skimmed through it. There's a lot of awesome recipes in there, it seems. Uh, I also bought another book. It's called uh, Putting Food By. And that teaches you canning, salt curing, drying, um, like, air, like outdoor air drying, dehydrating, lots and lots of different things. I want to read that also. I always can that night, no kids around. Exactly, exactly. Oh, almost kicked the tripod over. Oh, it's got some velocity. Boston, you moved to Hawaii from Boston? That's cool, that's, that's an awesome move. Are you from Boston originally? You guys don't eat the vet per, um, get the apple flavored horse paste or pills from your doctor. Didn't know, NSF? J, NSF, I forgot what it stands for, I used to know. Every piece of commercial kitchen equipment that I have, uh, also, doesn't have to be commercial, but most of the stuff I have is commercial, down to my wire shelving I have down in the dungeon, my prepping uh, shelving racks, those are NSF certified, which means they're food grade. And NSF certification, for certain things have certain criteria. They're like the National Food Safety Commission board. And for a food filter, I mean a water filter. You guys hear it? We're set. Okay. All together now, guys. Let me turn this off. Not safe for work is NSF. Not. Wait time, yes. So, here in New Jersey, it's 10 pounds. And here we go. And if I remember correctly from the book, after you get your first uh, little jangle, your jingle jangle from the weight, once it starts moving, the first sound it makes is when you start your 90 minutes. Can somebody confirm?
Yes, okay. So let's just get it ready. We won't start it, but we'll get it ready. Timer. Mine doesn't jiggle, I just use my gauge. Okay, you could do that too, I guess, yeah. That makes sense. Wait for the gauge to go up to 10 pounds, okay. Autotron, move that of San Francisco after shelter, after shelter in. Oh, okay. The lockdowns went into effect. Been moving around ever since. Super spreader styles. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's funny. Rocking and rolling. Then time to 90 minutes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. She could do videos with you. I've asked her a few times. Hopefully soon. What part of California are you originally from, Autotron? Uh, chicken breast. Fourteen quarts of chicken breast, uh, raw packed, with a teaspoon of uh, bu uh, bullion powder. Getting jiggly with it, yes. If it don't jiggle, it's not for me. I like it jiggly. I want, you know, I want to show you guys something. I don't know if this is normal, if this is some sort of a defect. Is that okay? That's okay, Marsha? All right. Okay. <laughs> he said run. It's gonna it's gonna explode.
Oh, you're making tacos? Nice. Regular ground beef tacos? Or are you doing like uh, chicken, steak? Or you, you're just going traditional ground beef? And I don't mean just traditional ground beef. Traditional ground beef is awesome. Ground beef, nice. Yes, we're, we are in the kitchen together. I want some tacos now. Marsha, I canned uh, 40 pounds. And out of the 40 pounds, the 40 pounds made, there's 14 in the, uh, and then, oops, there's two, four, six, seven. So 21, 21 cans, 21 quart jars um, I packed. 14 fit in here, so 40 pounds. But there's not 40 pounds in here now. Good night, Susan, from Western North Carolina. Yeah, we're all getting the midnight munch. Kathy's getting the munchies. Ron had some cold pizza, nice. Wrong face. Come on, baby. Yeah, seriously, I'm really hungry. Uh, take America back. Are you uh, are you a corn tortilla or a flour tortilla guy? Yeah, somebody's always up on the internet. Hard shell corn, nice. Julia Child would be jealous. Well, that is one heck of a compliment, thank you. Non-GMO. Trader Joe's or uh, Whole Foods? Organic cheese, tomatoes, and lettuce from my garden. Nice. I can't wait to start a garden. about six pounds of pressure on the gauge. Let's look at some recipes. These are just the recipes that came in the uh, instruction manual slash recipe book. These are all the different sizes. 
This is the one I have. It's the second the biggest. This is the tw uh, the 30. This is the 25. Oh, that's the 40. 30, 25. I think that's a 21. And then 15 and 10, I think. Or wait, no, 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 wait. This is the 25 or the 21. 15 and 10, okay. They also make can sealers if you want to uh, can your own food and like can actually like metal cans. You can do number 10 cans or smaller cans. The gauge is almost, it's at about seven pounds now. Let's see. Okay. I'm gonna read some of these comments. It doesn't smell, Autotron. I don't smell nothing. Last time I did it, it did have a smell. During, I mean, towards the, um, you know, when it started going for a while, I smelt it. It was a pretty strong smell, too. So, Marsha says, I can, number 10 can of nacho cheese, and then I can taco meat and also potatoes which when you open up the jars, I have nacho cheese, taco meat over potatoes, uh, good meal. Um, heck yeah, that sounds freaking amazing. All in pint jars because there's just the two of us. Rock on, Marsha, you're awesome. You are awesome. <laughs> Just the two of us. We're getting there. We're getting close to that ten pound uh that ten pound mark on the gauge. You know what I think I'll do tomorrow? I've got some I've got some good bread. Let me show you guys what bread I like to eat. It's kind of ghetto looking because it's half empty, but I don't know if you guys have ever had. I'm sure most of you have. Dave's killer bread. So I think I'm going to take some of the uh, chicken that I jarred, I canned last time, about, it's been almost a month I'd say, and I'm going to make some chicken salad, and perhaps I will um, capture it on video, make a video out of it, my chicken salad recipe. I wish I had some chicken salad right now. I'm starving. All right, we are a hair, a hair away from that 10 pound mark, guys. Ballard family, that bread is awesome. I actually prefer the good seed the one that's called Good Seed, the uh, yellow one. It's got the yellow accents on the bag. I buy the uh, white done right for the kids, uh, but I finished my Good Seed, so I gotta eat the white done right. Mm. 
You buy that bread at Costco, rock on Heidi. Sherry bakes all her own bread. Um, you're freaking awesome. Ron agrees, that's good bread. Heck yes. FS Gromad recans tomatoes from their aluminum cans. They last longer. That's a wonderful idea. Oh! You guys hear that? Baby, here we go. <laughs> Countdown has initiated. Ninety minutes to launch. gonna turn it down just a little bit according to the book you're supposed to get between 1 and 10 little rattles per minute can somebody confirm Marcia says now to see how often you have to readjust your burner to keep between 10 and 11 psi adjust fire okay Sorry guys. It's at 10 on the dot. Heidi says, why is this so entertaining? <laughs> Good question.
Okay. I think it's good. We can just hang out right here. I'll pull up a chair. Turning it down in very small increments. I think it's a little high. Good night, Sherry. Thank you for stopping by. Babysitting my sisters and daughters all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's great to watch what was once taught to my mother's generation in school and my family that is becoming a must in today's world. It definitely is a must. 10 to 2 a.m. Going to go get rest. Oh, God, Sherry. Sherry's sleeping. Good night to you, Sherry. Marsha, just think how many meals you have created with each batch. One batch, 14 meals for your family. Every time you do a batch, 14 meals. It starts adding up. Yes, my dear. I'll, yep, you're absolutely right. Kathy says, my Presto doesn't have a gauge, but I figured out the best place to turn the fire down to is on my rickety old stove. Hey, technique, technique, listen. Technique is the number one capability, okay? Know-how and your technique. Knowledge comes before uh, stuff, tools, contraptions. That's second, that's just, that's just accents.
think we're running a little hot. Cherry and cranberry butter. Oof. That sounds wonderful. Good night, Kathy. Thank you very much for stopping by. Thanks for hanging out. Take care, Kathy. Good night. So I don't remember, I know the book said it's got to make between a certain number of rattles per minute. But this is good. I think if it rattles a few times per minute, uh, Ron, Marsha, chime in. You guys, uh, is there a specific... That's a great idea, Susan. That's a great idea. Yeah, if the electricity goes out, we got no baby food. Gauge, okay. Gauge is good, gauge is still at 10 on the dot. And then they were 15. That sweet spot, yeah, that's what I'm trying to kind of, trying to look now and see. I think this is good. Might be a little low, I don't know. Working out your seeds. Oh, okay. One hundred and sixty four varieties. Wowzers. That's a lot. That's a lot. I've got, um, I just got an alert on my, on my order. I have a pack of, like a bundle of seeds coming. I think I told you guys, yeah, I told you guys. It's, uh, it's heirloom. My sweet spot can change when the barometer changes. It doesn't always stay the same. Okay. I don't think I have 164, I think I've got how many are coming in that box? I want to say maybe 40, 40 something, but that's still a lot for me. I don't have that much land. This is suburban New Jersey. I want to take that. Purple, hollow peas, black eyed peas, cantaloupe, watermelon, more squash.
I don't want to get in trouble. Everybody's going to start uh, hollering at me. I want to I wanna show you guys my yard. You know, maybe tomorrow we'll go live. Or I'll shoot a video. I want to take you guys to the backyard. Um, the border, the border of the property in the back of the yard behind the swimming pool. Um, we got, we're on a corner. So we have a house on one side and a house on one side. Two, two houses. One of them, the fence has a raised bed that runs along the fence. It's got a bunch of, uh, Four by fours. Are they four by fours or six by sixes? They're six by sixes. I think four high. Yeah, about four, four, four six by sixes high. Kind of like a raised bed. There's some shrubbery and a lot of weeds in there right now. But I'm going to rip them all out in the spring and uh, grow some food. Five acres. The rest is trees. That's awesome. I wish, that's a dream come true. That would be a dream come true for me. To get out of Jersey. And I, I love Jersey. I don't mind living in high uh, population density. I am, uh, I was born here, raised here. But I always felt like I could uh, be more myself if I was in a more, uh, remote or more country setting um, rural let's say in a more rural setting where uh, firearms outdoor activities um, more traditional values things like that are are important to me and you know here in New Jersey sure there are lots of neighborhoods that are very traditional and um, you do meet occasional people that are into um, self-defense and everything that comes with it, but not many, not many, not at all, not many at all. Some, it's rare. You're at the end of Long Island, surrounded by farms. Okay. West Virginia. You know what, Pocahontas? I was looking at real estate in West Virginia for a bug out location. It's a seven hour drive from me. And seven hours is not bad. Uh, I drive almost three to my in-laws. It's work, it gets lonely for the, for the granddaughter. But she's got skills for 12. I'm sure. I'm sure you raised her well. Meat, meat is going to become precious. They are nefarious about protein. Can as much as you can now before it becomes more scarce. It's good to know. I mean, thank you for, I mean, it's good to know. It's good to, to hear that. It's good to hear that because I need that fire under my ass. Excuse my language, but I need that fire under my ass to get me more motivated to get more meat, you know, more beef, more chicken, um, fish, whatever, and just can it, can it, can it. You're absolutely right. This is only my second batch. And I've had this thing for two months. Yes, meat will be scarce. Yep. Pocahontas says West Virginia is a beautiful state. I bet it is. You know what guys, these contacts are killing me. Ice Age Farmer, yes. Yep, I know exactly what you're talking about. 
I say from what by I mean if what he says or what he predicts or what he from the information that he's finding if that stuff is becomes reality we are in deep doo doo we're gonna be in trouble it's gonna be bad it's gonna be bad that's gonna be a real estate yes let me stand up I don't like looking looking up I like looking down. It's real. Yeah, I believe it. I mean, they're all like legitimate reports from, uh, you know, government agencies and things of that nature. UK is killing all the chickens, some kind of bird flu. I heard that. I heard they're just coming out of people's properties. Even people that have a few chickens up, up to people that have, you know, chicken farms. Um, for slaughter and whatnot, just decimating their their entire flock. Would it be a flock? That's their agenda. Can more beef, chicken, fish? You eat pork? Uh, no, not really. UK is killing. Peanuts. You're gonna play in peanuts? That's cool. That reminds me of Jimmy Carter. You will have it nipped in the butt, Tony, in no time. Thanks, Pocahontas. Okay, FS says this Southwest woman is learning to gardening in the Northeast. So different. I bet it is. I bet it is. But rock on, you know. You're doing what you gotta do. That's what we all gotta do. Your granddaughter has 30 chickens. God bless her. That's nice. Get some pork butt, pork loin, Angus beef to can. Yeah, I gotta go tomorrow. Fish, beef, chicken, pork. You know what? Canning fish. I know you guys have all mentioned it. I know you guys all can it. Ron, I know you do. Marsha, everybody. But I don't know, canning fish just seems risky, unsanitary. I don't know, like, I just have this uh, this notion that it would spoil, that it wouldn't. I mean, I know it won't. I know it's good, but I, I'm gonna pick up some salmon tomorrow, guys. We're gonna have a long live stream tomorrow. We're gonna have like a six-hour live stream. We're gonna we're gonna do a lot of canning. That's her side hustle. What does she do? She sells eggs. Nice. <laughs> I've never had a fresh egg. Not once in my life. Never had a fresh egg. You've never canned fish? Marsha doesn't like... Oh, I didn't know you didn't like fish. Okay. You have canned tuna, salmon. You know what? I feel so stupid right now, Pocahontas. I feel... Like a, uh, like an idiot, yeah. There's canned tuna, canned salmon. Oh boy. You can can bacon. I've heard. I've heard. Ron cans bacon. Marsha, you're Norwegian and you don't like fish. You don't like the pickled herring and um, fermented shark.
I want to do some bone-in chicken, maybe. You can bacon? Okay. Guys, would you guys mind if I run and grab my contact solution real quick? My eyes are awful. 30 seconds, literally. Okay, here, you guys watch. You guys watch it. I'll be back in 30 seconds, okay? Okay, I'm back. Oh, that's so much better. Let's see. Tony, if you ever get a fresh egg from a chicken or duck, you will see such a big difference in the freshness and how rich it is. I've heard about the richness. I wish, I love eggs. I eat four eggs, five eggs in the morning, no problem. I'm a big fan of eggs. Do I have contact solution in my preps? You know what, I do not. I do not have the solution. I have lots of contacts. I have a um, one year supply of the two week contacts. So I have 24 pairs downstairs in the dungeon, but no solution. You got me, Heidi. I gotta get some tomorrow. That's important. I watch a YouTube channel, cook bacon for a little while in the oven, then wrap in parchment paper, can pint jars when you open the jar, you find how crispy you want it. It's a good uh, method. Canning milk. That's, uh, you know what? I uh, would like to know the answer to that question too. I have a lot of Parmalat and powdered milk, but if we could can fresh milk, that'd be amazing. That that saved you so much money and time and effort. Anybody can can milk? I'm gonna go back in the comments a little bit, see what I missed. Autotron, Montegras is how I found your channel. Half of my subscribers are from Monty. I was at six something, now I'm at 12 something. Exactly doubled my subscriber count. And bless you all, most of you stayed. I had about 20, 30 people unsubscribe that came on from Monty. But I mean, subscribing to three new channels every night, I'm sure you, 
you know, subscribe to some people out of kindness and, you know, being a, being a room raider and all, you should go and subscribe. And then you probably want to unsubscribe from some of them once in a while. So I didn't take any offense. But he told everyone he is not doing any more live streams. When did, he was just on yesterday. Never can milk, never can milk. Oh, powdered milk for SHTF. Yeah, I got some pretty good powdered milk. I got a good supply. I got a lot of Parmalat too. Ron's got to go. Ron's got, Ron's good to go. Wait, why did he do it? Does anybody know why? Did he give a reason? Yesterday was his last live stream. I like watching Monty. That's so strange. He came on almost every night. He said things was going down by the 24th. He thinks that's HTF. Hmm. I mean, if, if I trust one person, and only the few weeks that I've known him, it would be Monty. Uh, I don't know, I'd like this connection with him. I'm sure all of you feel that and know that much more than I do, but the man has a, uh, he knows things. Because he said all that needs to be said, wait, because he said, all that needs to be said, because he believes things will all turn on its head by the 24th. Oh, phenomenal. It's storming over here too, it's raining very, very hard, we have very high winds. By the 24th, it's going to get bad, huh? Shit. What day is the 24th? I would check my phone, but I'm looking at my phone right now. That's what he said. Everything, everything can go dark in 40 days, which will mean a lot of deaths. A lot of deaths, Marsha, right? Right? Think about it, like... Budsicle, Budsicle, Northern Ireland, very stormy. Sharon, Northern Ireland, excuse me, hold on. Are you in Northern Ireland or the North of Ireland? Because those are two different things, right? My P's in the house. What's up, my P? Same thing? Okay. Been good, my P. Been pretty good. Busy. Busy. Amanda Collins, welcome. Hello, hello. We're canning some chicken, everybody. My P, we're canning chicken. I'm sure you know by the uh, title of the stream. Tony, you better can all the meat and baby food and milk. Yeah. I gotta, now that I, uh, I heard this, 
I don't know Monty said that. I wish you know I'm gonna I'm gonna watch his uh his stream tomorrow. Is his channel still up? Did he keep his uh his channel up? I'm in the British part of Ireland. Okay. That's that's like the five, six counties considered the north of Ireland where the troubles were, right? I'm just I'm a, I'm a little into history, I kinda like history. And I uh, I did a little bit of reading on the troubles. Six counties, okay. Gave five specific dates to watch for. First is this Sunday into Monday. You know what? Uh, Janet said next Sunday. Next Sunday is the 24th. So next, so Wednesday is the inauguration, right? Wednesday? Yes, okay. It's the 20th. Okay, yeah, yeah, Sunday. We've got just a week and one day, guys, to get ready. Seventeenth into eighteenth. Monty's stuff is still there. Good. Okay, I'm gonna go watch it. What's Monty's channel? It's a channel called Montagraph, M-O-N-T-A-G-R-A-P-H, Montagraph. Um, good channel. Montagraph wasn't himself. Oh yeah. He probably sees, he probably like senses the thing. I think he's got some sort of a, a vision that normal people don't. I don't can milk anymore. I buy box, powder, and canned milk. Okay. Get your small canning jars for baby food. I've got some, uh, I've got two cases of half pints. I was going to use them for making little cheesecakes that Marsha told me about and uh, lemon bars. But I think we're going to use them for baby food. But that's not enough. I'm going to buy jars tomorrow too. You're right, Marsha. It took me a long time to understand what he was saying. I, I mean, even... I didn't watch him every single night, but I watched him, you know, enough. And sometimes I went back and watched his uh, streams and I never got everything. Some of the things I did eventually understand, I put two and two together, um, but he spoke in uh, code. I don't know the technical word for it, the correct term. Yes, get the high half pint wide mouth jars for cheesecakes. I got the half pint regular mouth jars, two cases. I'll use those for baby food, and I'll get the wide mouths for uh, for the cheesecakes. I'm listening to see if I have to adjust this at all. It's still at 10 psi. I just feel like it's rattling a little bit too much, but it's okay. I recently find that found out about the jelly jars for baby food, like the uh, pasta jars, jelly jars, things like that you can reuse. I forgot who was telling me about it. It might have been my pee. I don't know, was it you, my pee? Somebody was telling me about you can reuse food jars as long as it has the, you know what, while we're here, while we're on the subject, 
I hope it's not too cluttery in here. Okay, it's not too bad. Like, if it has the, um, the cut, like the liner, you can, you can can in this, right, people? It was you, my P, yeah. Okay, good to know. I've been saving these for a little bit now. I wish I'd been saving them much longer because I go through, you know what, I go through like a freaking mutant. I'm telling you, and this may be four sandwiches for me. Four sandwiches, this whole jar is done. I kid you not. I eat peanut butter and jelly like, uh, like I'm gonna get, I'm, like there's no tomorrow. This is four, maybe six, maybe six sandwiches if I, if I try to ration it, you know, go real cheap. But this stuff is awesome. <laughs> it's old school. It's old school. Now I have a. Let me tell you, I just. We just got a uh, a Whole Foods that opened up by our house. It's literally a 90 second drive. I've been having this um, lately. Instead of the Goober, I'm trying to go a little healthier, go organic. Oh my God, best peanut butter ever, 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 ever. And this, to die for, absolutely to die for. So good, so good. From Canada, A. Eh? And where's this from? Whole Foods. I have a, let's see. Marsha, my husband loves peanut butter and jam sandwiches. Your husband's my kind of guy. You can buy bowl jelly sized jars. Okay. I eat peanut butter when I'm stressed. Whole Foods have a peanut butter maker. Fresh and no preservatives. Peanut butter maker. Like make your own out of peanuts. Don't get this one. This one tastes like ugh. it's almost inedible. Oh, they grind it right there for you, like upon request. Go get jars of canning salt. Oh, you do it yourself. Really? I didn't catch that when I was there. I haven't been there too many times. I've only been there two, maybe three times. At this one here, anyway. There's a machine. The one in Marlton has it by the bolt section. Oh, you know what? Who was that? Let me find your name. Let's see. Heidi, I don't know if you're still in here. I forgot to tell you, I've got uh, three pairs of glasses too, downstairs in the dungeon prepped. Well, two are prepped. They're still in the package, the box they got shipped in. 
and one is my my wearing glasses that I wear. If I take off my contacts, I put them on. I wear them daily. If I'm wearing glasses, but I have two still in the box. That's at Heidi. If you're still here, I don't like just ground peanuts. I like a little sweetness in my peanut butter. Jif is my favorite. I, you know, I've never tried Jif. We always got uh, Skippy. My mom always bought Skippy. I just always bought Skippy until I got married and started, you know, actually uh, learning what things were. I bet it's good. Canning salt, you can put meat and salt to keep it. Okay. So like um, salt preserving, salt preserving meat. It seems like there's a lot to that though. It's like, seems pretty involved and intricate and uh, precise. You gotta be very precise. I might be wrong. I watched a few YouTube videos on it and it seemed very, uh, very involved. It is involved? Yeah, it seems like it. It seems like it's pretty, uh, a lot of rules you gotta follow. Canned meat is the best. Well, tomorrow, I'm gonna go to Restaurant Depot. I'm gonna get some ribeye. Let's see what else they got. I'm gonna get chicken thighs, drumsticks. I gotta get... All right, so if we're gonna lose power for 40 days and 40 nights, guys, I'm gonna adjust the tripod. Please pardon me for one second. So much better. I pray we don't too. That would be awful. That would be horrible. But if we do, if we were to, non preppers are going to turn into, you know, they, they think the government's going to roll out with trucks with bottled water and rations. Um, but they're going to. The ones that survive, that don't die, they're going to turn into uh, marauders. I hope you don't, I hope we don't too, Sharon. That's true, Susan. If you have salt, when things go down, if you have a surplus of salt, I guess you can figure it out. You can make do. The salt preserved meat tastes funky. You were raised on it. Pocahontas says being alone sucks. Do you live alone, Pocahontas? You have a community, a neighborhood. You live in the suburbs, in the city, in the country. Small city. Okay. Oh, I got 5% battery.
I just saved the phone, almost died. Okay, Pocahontas, make sure you have water. Definitely make sure you have water. Do you have a, um, a self-defense tool? Clickety clack. No. Clickety clack. I like that. People will turn into savages. You will have to defend yourself. Agreed. Absolutely. Positively. Ron says just me and my little granddaughter. I bet your granddaughter's a crack shot, Ron. I bet she could reach out to 300 yards with her little pink 22. My pee is right, Pocahontas. If anything. I would actually um, go on eBay and uh, get some pepper spray. Not the the little keychain ones they sell at AutoZone. If if that's all you have, fine. But if you go on eBay and you can get like um, the riot, the police, the same ones the police use. It's called Saber. S A B R E. Saber. Uh, it's like a tall tall canister like this with a handle with a yellow button. Um, I have a few of those. She's got knowledge of my 357. You're all right, Ron. The best, it's best not to let people know what you have. No gun, Susan says no gun but knives. Susan, I would get a canister of mace to, to complement that knife. Or bear spray, yes. Bear spray or um, riot control kind of pepper, pepper spray. eBay has lots of it. I would definitely check out eBay, guys. And you don't have to get the gigantic ones, like the big canister. You can get the slightly taller you know, like not, not that long keychain, it's like about double the height of the keychain. That's good too. I know how to use a clickety clack, but I don't have one. You know, the whole wasp spray thing, uh, I guess in theory it could work, but you gotta really get them. Like you gotta actually hit them here. You gotta hit them. The, the mace, pepper spray, bear mace or regular mace, if you even spray them in the stomach or the chest, or even if it goes past them, the stream, the mist is gonna, is gonna choke them out, it's gonna stop them. Even if it doesn't get them on the floor, it'll stop them in their tracks, it'll disorient them, give you time to escape, or run up and, you know, do what you gotta do. Guys, wait here one second. I'm gonna run downstairs. I'm gonna do show and tell.
See, this is not huge. You can still fit it in your purse. Um, you can get this one, people. This is a home defense one. This doesn't have the collateral damage. It's a gel stream, so it won't like just kill everybody in the house, get everybody choked out. Just some options. This is the, uh, the newest uh, version, edition, I'm sorry, the newest edition. Some old timers don't like it. Some of the old timers aren't crazy about it. I read some reviews about this edition on um, Barnes and Noble. And um, some of the old classic recipes are not in here anymore, but they've got some pretty new I mean, it's usually they've got some classic recipes. They've got chicken and beef bone broth. I mean, that's about as classic as it comes. French onion soup. You're welcome, Bogantis. If you want me to send you a link or anything, just email me. Sharon, I mean, hopefully we don't have to use them. Hopefully none of us have to use them. Mmm. This sounds good. Beef chipotle chili. Has anybody out here, uh, I mean, any of you guys, uh, have you tried chipotle peppers? They come in a can. It's a Mexican product. Chipotle peppers. You can, you can get the older versions from your library, as in you can go buy them from the library or uh, check them out, like rent them. Because you can buy uh, the versions from uh, eBay too, rather inexpensive. Down to 15. A PDF, that's true. You probably could check my scanner. Okay. It's on 10 PSIs. Exactly 10.
I also bought this book. It teaches you about um, canning, freezing, salting, smoking, drying, and root cellaring. So, uh, I haven't read it yet. I haven't even cracked it open. But, uh, someday. I bought this book. This was, um, they got this on Facebook and Instagram. They always have the, uh, the commercial, like a little advertisement for it on YouTube, um, Facebook. It seems okay. Seems a little bit like full of shit. Some of it's common sense, but it's got some pretty cool stuff in here too. The chicken is coming along, Mr. Ziegler. We got 20 minutes left. No, I'm sorry. 27 minutes left. Still cooking, yes. If anybody, um, does not own this book. I'm gonna say, you don't need a firearm, don't let this fool you. What they teach is in here is not how to shoot or how to uh, get a, be in a gunfight or anything. These are just the principles of personal defense, not of gunfighting or shooting or anything like that. Personal defense as in situational awareness, um, so it's very short, it's just the principles, the principles are, are these, look, you got alertness, decisiveness, aggressiveness, speed, I can't read, uh, coolness, ruthlessness, and surprise. It's a very um, quick read, but read this book and it will change you. It will change you. And if ever you are in an altercation, this book may, um, may be, the, I don't know, may instill things in you that you, that can save your life. I recommend it. It's, it's inexpensive. I got it on eBay. Jeff Cooper. Take America back. From Israel is back. Welcome back, everybody. Everybody went to the tour and they came back. I'm still, I'm, I'm the only guy right now, up and live. We're watching chicken. <laughs> you know how I found out about this book, Susan? Um, I went to go take a class, a firearms class. Um, there's a company called Tactical Response out of Tennessee, and uh, they just suggested it. Suggested you read it. It's not a uh, requirement, but they said uh, I think they suggested it, and I did read it. I read it maybe eight times. It's a very, very good book.
Let me open the window. It's getting hot. Making a cuppa? What's a cuppa? What I miss? Jeff Cooper, yep. My pea? Chicken berries. Um, actually, this chicken that I'm canning right now, I paid $1.49 a pound. Yes, take America, Jeff Cooper. <laughs> Making a cuppa, BRB. Sharon, what's a cuppa? 24 degrees here in the Mountain State. Oh, she's making tea. Okay. Cuppa is tea. How does everybody know this? I've never heard of that before. Cuppa. Pocahontas knows. Janet knows that cuppa means tea. Okay, cool. I don't know the, what the mountain state is, but I will learn. 36 degrees in Louisiana. 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 I like Louisiana. Good, uh... Oh, what's his name? State. State. Attorney General, was it? Anyway, that's all in the past. They're all done. Yeah, chicken breasts might be. They, uh... 40 pound, 40 pound box, $1.49 a pound from Restaurant Depot. Well, Tony and others, I'm off to bed. Not a spring chicken, plus this damn surgery left me weak. You guys surge? Okay, Marsha, have a good night. I hope you feel better. Oh man, this, did I miss this comment? Is this comment really old? Oh, I am way behind. Good night, Marsha. Thank you for being here. And I hope your surgery went well. Oh, yeah, I didn't know you were getting surgery. Morning Glory. Yo, good morning. Having Mexican espresso. Good morning. Morning Glory, where are you from? That's you're saying good morning. 
it's the British way. Oh, so kappa is tea in British. Okay, now I know. Learn something new. Well, Pocahontas, like I know you're from West Virginia, but when you said Mountain State, I don't know why I didn't put that together. I feel stupid. It's called the Mountain State, okay. Interesting. Pocahontas' ex is British. That's cheap, no restaurant depots in South Jersey. There are black tea. Back with your tea. Back with your cuppa. Okay. Enjoy that tea, Sharon. Susan Williams, do you watch anyone British? No, I can't say that I do. But I do like British people. I like British accents. People should buy that book. But if you don't want... But if you don't want to, it's a free PDF. This one? Is a free PDF. If you can share it on here, I don't know if you can, or you got to East Coast Maryland. But it's morning to me. Wake early like a farmer's daughter. <laughs> No more Monty videos. What do you guys think that watch him? You know, I watched Monty only for a few weeks now, as you guys all know. Um, the guy is very smart, puts on a good show. Um, I don't know. I, I'm right now, priority-wise, I'm worried about. I'm more worried about the reason, the reason that he's not putting out any more shows. Um, hopefully, it doesn't happen, or it's not it doesn't come to light. It's, hopefully, he's wrong, um, and then he'll come back. All these had chicken breast for 169. Oh, last week, okay. Giant Frankenstein breast. These things were ginormous too. If you go into the beginning. Oh, you were here from the beginning though, right? These were pretty big. Ron has to drive two hours in any direction. That's tough. When I was in Britain, they always wanted me to talk for my accent, being from West Virginia. What's a Virginian accent? It's not a southern accent, is it? Like a southern bell? Or is it? I could be wrong. Maybe an older version. I can't post up a link, it won't show up. Monty is gone, like retired. Like Dunzo? That sucks. Yeah, my tea. And you know, some of those big breasts, they have a weird texture. You guys ever got that? Like that rubbery texture chicken? Funny and smart, absolutely. Very funny, very, very smart. Maybe too smart, like... 
He said if he was wrong, that he would delete all of his channels. You know, I was watching, I remember that part. I remember that part. I think, I guess I did watch that show last night, a little bit of it, maybe like 10 minutes of it. The smaller breasts are much better. Uh, the flavor, the texture, like the chew, the bite, um, the, way, the way they cook. Everything about the smaller ones is better. The bigger ones are, um, they come from the hormones and it's called woody, woody breast syndrome. I have a soft New York accent. It's a Jersey accent. A soft New York accent is a Jersey accent. Three hours and 25 minutes, Tony, LOL, 8 a.m. here. Holy Moses, three hours and 29, three hours and 30 minutes. Oh, shit. I live in the southern part. Southern accent, northern part, northeast accent, okay. Not South Jersey, we don't talk like that. Well, South Jersey is, uh, is different. It's so different. I don't think there's any other state in the Union that is uh, so different as New Jersey is from north to south. With, with all going on, meat has been cheaper than ever. With all going on, meat has been cheaper than ever. Cheap meat before we have no meat. That's a possibility. Yep. Like night and day, LOL. Yeah, absolutely. Mid-Atlantic, I sound like you, but more New York, not a southerner by birth. Yeah, Pocahontas, I heard that too. They are investing a lot of uh, time into creating like uh, infrastructure and factories and facilities to start turning worms and grasshoppers and roaches and shit into uh, into food and also that uh, Israel um, Israel opened its first uh, fake meat restaurant they've got you know kebabs and burgers and hot dogs and um, steaks I don't know what else they have meatball palm subs made from fake meat the meat is 100 percent um, created in a laboratory. It's not like the, the beyond the beyond burger, the beyond meat, where it's made from soy proteins and you know that vegan stuff. It's actual meat like substance that's created in a laboratory. They opened it in Israel, it's the first one in the world, and the food is free. You go in there as a customer, you sit down, you get a table, you get a menu, you take what you know, you look, okay, I'll have this, this and whatever. And you, you get it, you eat for free. You, you don't pay. They just try to get people used to it. That idea of fake meat. Just like with the Beyond. Yeah, but this is a meat made from plants. The Beyond meat, that they had a Burger King, the, the, you know, the, the Beyond Whopper. What was that? What waffle was that? Made from the, the plant proteins. It's different. I 
I agree, Pocahontas. Mmm, Taco Bell. I do too, take America back. Pocahontas is pretty cool. I just heard a crash. Okay. We are under seven minutes. Good night, my P. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you on the next one. Did you hear that, Morning Glory? Did you hear that crash? That sound? Countdown time. You heard it too, Ron? Okay. I don't know what that was. It wasn't thunder. It sounded like, uh, I don't know. But. We ready. Clickety clack. Yeah, something happened. I think I got a no kid from upstairs. Either one of the kids fell off the bed, or my wife is mad, or uh, something's going on upstairs. I think that's my conclusion now. Um, something with the internet also. As soon as I heard a noise, and then I lost you guys. I don't know. Susan says Wendy's if she goes out. Wendy's would be awesome right now. <laughs> the white stone stuff. <laughs> it's very possible. It's very possible. Four minutes and two seconds. Three 
Tony, do you have another canner? I do not. Refresh picture is back. Well, I don't know what that means, refresh picture. I wear contacts for many weeks straight. Not good, bad habit. Six weeks straight. I pretend I am not actually blind. Yeah, my eyes are bothering me. Oh, wait. Everybody can see me right now? Am I good? Okay. Thank you, thank you. A minute twenty. I don't know what these buttons do. this out. <laughs> this is my first time on my phone live streaming. Five seconds. Twenty five seconds, everybody. Hide your ID with some settings. Five, four, three. So now, ladies and gentlemen, future future viewers that are not hanging out here, and the uh, people that are watching just to learn how to can, you have to wait until your gauge naturally goes down to zero. Ron, do you remove the uh, the weight now, or anybody that's in here? I would zip lock the rest of that chicken and canner tomorrow. It's getting really late. The canner has to depressurize and cool down. Don't remove the weight. You can't remove the weight right now. You gotta leave it on? Okay. I will leave it on. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna put those jars, the other seven jars in the, uh, in the refrigerator. So the weight stays while decomp decompressing. Okay. 10 4. How many pounds in the canner now? You know, I don't have a calculator. But we had 40 pounds total, 21 jars were created 
from those from that 40 pounds okay so say basically two pounds per jar just to be to round off so 21 jars 40 pounds so two pounds per jar 14 jars are in here so say 14 pounds 14 pounds maybe 15 pounds ish are in here currently the all american model 920 no 930 model 930 14 jars 28 pounds okay Time to wait again. Yeah, we're just gonna do some more waiting. Just put the jars not processed in the fridge for another day. Yes, Judith, I think that's what I'm gonna have to do or else I will be sleeping in the dungeon tonight. I'm already in, I'm knee deep in some, uh, some trouble right now. But if I put another batch in there, I'm not going to be able to sleep in my own bed tonight. I need to seal a meal 10 pounds of red snapper. Did you guys see that? You need to seal a meal, 10 pounds of red snapper. Like seal it, like can it? Ron, you saw that uh, surge? I don't know what that was, but it is raining pretty bad. Good night, Blank and Chip. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for hanging out. Appreciate it. Yeah, the lights dimmed. It was like a surge or something. Let jars stay in the canner. In the morning, remove and wipe down. Can you do that? Can I just... Just walk away right now? me thank you take America back from Israel that's very kind of you that's very nice of you I appreciate that very much thank you supposed to Pocahontas is supposed to get some snow in West Virginia. I wish we had some snow. You can... You can what is called canning sour. You can get what is called canning sour. Probably best to pull and set on a wire rack to cool. Take America back is from Florida. Lucky you. Okay, Cindy, I will remember that. I was gonna do a towel. Actually, I was gonna put them back in the boxes. Would that be okay? Anybody? Verdict? Can I put them in here? Uh, I was gonna line the bottom with a um, towel. Well, I guess I don't have to put them in the box. I just put them on the towel on the counter. Box is okay? All right. Okay. 
I'll put them on a towel. The pressure is down to, let me check the battery. I was down to 4% before. I'm up to 12%. I'm gonna say no to that. Take America back because I um, don't think the everybody else would agree. <laughs> I would have cracked it by now. I would have just taken a little weight off, uh, but I'm gonna do it the right way. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna do it the way Ron and Marsha and Cindy and everybody in here. Yeah, FS, FS Gromad, Gromad, everybody that's been here for four hours with me the whole time, all you guys. This must be, this very well might be the only video on YouTube with zero um, editing production from the from putting the chicken in the jars to letting the cans cool down I mean the uh, the the, uh, the canner depressurize there's no gasket on this canner interesting it is interesting but uh, raw footage yeah <laughs> All the bloopers and everything. What the fuck is that? You know, I think that's the uh, the heat turning on. Take America Backs has a gasket, different style. I think most of them do have the gasket. Uh, this doesn't. But I think uh, it's more common to have one with a gasket. Screw on lid types. Okay. Oh really, Cindy? Okay. Yeah, it seems pretty well built. It's quite uh, robust, you know? Like all the pieces, all the components seem very well built. That's good, Ron. I like that. Slow Sally. Hank, I did not boil the chicken first. Take America says, literally. Yeah, she's slow. I didn't boil the chicken breast. I, uh, I did a roll pack. I did 21 quarts in total. She fits two layers of seven, so 14 at a time. I've got seven left, which I will do tomorrow. 
Um, I have a teaspoon of chicken bouillon powder and I'm excited to see how they turn out. Sally is like really taking her time. She's still got five PSIs. Yeah, it, I did a raw packing, Hank. Sneaking down the alley with slow Sally. <laughs> She's smooth though. <laughs> she doesn't rush, she gets the job done right. You really need to get those jars not done in the fridge now, please. Judith, you are right. Okay, Ron seconds that notion. So let's do that. Is it edible now or will it still have to be cooked when opened? I think that's cooked all the way through. I'm not sure. I think somebody else can answer that better than me. I'm still a rookie. I still haven't eaten anything out of a out of a jar yet. Anything that I've that I've canned. Oh man, we got no room in here. Don't judge me guys, the refrigerator is dirty. Well, not dirty. It's a little disorganized. Judgment free zone. Remaining seven quarts of chicken are in the fridge. Just let those unprocessed jars get to room temperature before put them in the canner. Okay. Take America back, retracted two comments. Wow, must keep all the flavor. Wow, must keep all the flavor in that chicken. I hope so. Sweet Baby Ray's, yeah, that's my favorite. The chicken will be completely cooked after the processing. Okay, it is cooked. If the canner cooks it, it's edible. Put your jars on the counter in the refrigerator, did that. Is it edible? Okay. All right, so that's ready to cook. That's good. I say that's 14 of us. Judging you. I was joking. Oh, okay. I know you're joking. I would have known that.
I'm going to crack a window, see if you guys can hear the rain. I guess the rain's not that loud, but it is raining in here. I love rainstorms too. I am tired, but this is a lot of fun. I like doing this. I like you guys being in here. Thank you all for being here and hanging out. We do sleep good in rainstorms. Rain has stopped here now in Ireland, in Northern Ireland. Wish you up north get the cold from here. Glad you are doing the things to prepare. I'm trying to do the things. I've been slacking, but uh, I've noticed that surge happens, that you guys just saw that flicker, when the, um, the heat turns on, the, the central, the, set, the climate control, the forced air heat. It's one of the only things we have control of, yeah, like literally the only thing we have control of. Okay, you hear that rain now? Cold rain. And it's not like that muggy, moist uh, rain weather, you know, when the air is just moist and nasty and sticky. It's brisk, very brisk, very cold rain, and the air is just like a, almost like a, it's just winter winter air let me show you the that's my swimming pool
Thank you, guys. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. Take America back. Thank you, Ron. They came with the house, actually. It was the um, the old uh, the lady that owned it before us. She sold this house to move to um, Pennsylvania to be with her um, granddaughter. Not to not to be with her granddaughter, but she lived. Uh, she moved near her her daughter, her son-in-law, and her granddaughter. Or else he said she would have never moved from this neighborhood. She would have never moved from this house. Um, and I don't blame her. Thank you, Hank. Thank you, Janet. Yeah, I guess I, I don't blame her either. I would have done the same thing. She wasn't, she wasn't happy to go. She was sad to see her, uh, you know, like her last day here was not very, uh, Lori's back. What's up, Lori? Firefly Farm. Mine moved to the city. I'm staying put. Ron's staying in the Alamo. He's not going. He's staying in the fortifications. Can't sleep. Would you like me to um, bring you up to speed, Lori? The 90 minutes have elapsed. North Shore prepared this. Good evening to you, sir. What a pleasure and honor it is to have you here. I am the prepared patriarch. I've been watching North Shore's live streams for a very long time. All right, Lori. So, um, the 21 jars, so the 40 pound box of chicken breast gave us 21 quarts of chicken. And this here specific model, this particular model that I have, the All American, 930, it's a 30 quart, it fit uh, 14 quarts, 7 and 7. So we have 7 more that I, we just put in the refrigerator. So we did step by step. It's a tutorial for anybody in the future that watches this video, that they want to learn how to can chicken, raw pack chicken, they'll watch this, they'll watch this four and a half hour long <laughs> live stream. <laughs> Um, we did all the things, we did all the steps, we kind of highlighted it, we talked about it, why we do it, everybody in the comments was uh, sharing their knowledge, uh, we put the, the, you know, everything from the vinegar to in the water to the putting the jars in and then turning the, the flame up, waiting for the steam to come for 10 minutes and now we are uh, waiting for the 90 minutes have elapsed. The canning is done. We are waiting for the steam to dissipate completely. Once the steam dissipates completely, we will then open her up and we will then remove our chicken. I don't have a towel. You guys wait one minute. I gotta go grab a towel, okay? Hold on, I'll be right back. Actually, I have some uh, aprons. I'll use these aprons. All right, let's get my books out of here.
This should be, this should be enough. Triple layer, triple layer of aprons. 21 can, I mean 14 cans will fit on there pretty good. Um, what do you guys say? Good? Thunder snow. Thunder snow? I never heard of thunder snow before. Leave it to West Virginia. Remove the weight. Okay. Oh, you know what? This milk is expired. So, it's got to go. I poured it in my coffee this morning and it was chunky in the cottage cheese. Okay, I'm going to remove the weight. Northern cutting boards work nicely. Wooden cutting boards work nicely. Okay, yes, I don't have any wooden cutting boards. I have that one right there on top of the Breville. Uh, fancy pants um, toaster oven slash air fryer slash dehumidifier. But that's more of a decorative piece. It is supposed to be a cutting board, but my wife leaves it there as a decorative piece, so I don't know. I'm just going to not touch it. But good point though, like a nice butcher block or I'm sure it would be great. You know what, North? I don't know. Okay, I'm, re I'm removing the weight. I'm removing the weight. I don't know if it's hot. Is it hot? It's kind of hot. It's hissing. So I'll probably wait for it to stop hissing, I would presume. Something smells like it's burnt. Leave it sit for an hour at least. Really? Cindy, you agree with North Shore? Okay. What's in that pen, hee <laughs> hee? Oh, no man. If it was that, you think I'd be here right now? I'd be upstairs under my bed with the covers drawn over my head. That's uh, no more. Those are the old days. I can't anymore. You know, I'll take an occasional Valium or something, you know, with a glass of wine once a year. Uh, but whew, the other stuff, mm -mm, I would be, it would be detrimental. I did get a haircut, Lori. It's been a few weeks now, but it's also been a few weeks since I've been uh, on here.
Okay, so there's no more steam escaping the valve. Nothing at all. It's been that the valve has been, I mean, this valve, the steam valve, nothing's coming out. No air, no steam, no nothing. This has been at zero for quite a while. Um, I'm just gonna, just gonna go for it, little by little. Let's take our time. Oof, it's bubbling away. Number one. Number two. There's the seven. I tell you what, one of the cans that I grabbed, I didn't know where you, where, where you were supposed to make the contact and clamp on. I was doing it right under the, the, um, the, the cap. And when I grabbed one, I think I gave it too much pressure. And uh, some of the, the juice inside excreted. 
So I may have one that's not going to be good, but it's okay. You live, you learn. I may have failed jars from time to time. Just watch them refrigerate the product to use it up. Okay. Oh. Yeah, this one's like boiling over. And that's it. Let's take a look at them. There they are. The 14. Oh, you know what? We gotta get plugged back in here. Where's that? Good night, Judith. Thank you, Sharon. No electricity needed. Yep, that's like the best part about it. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Ron, Lori, Cindy again, Cashew. Cashew, you were in here the whole time. What's going on? Judith says, fantastic. Thank you, Judith. Yeah, a few of them have popped. I'm hearing the, uh, the pop, poppity pop. Oh, okay. See you tomorrow. 
See you tomorrow. Everybody have a good night. God bless you. Thank you for being here. So if you know, let me turn the camera around and do see if I can zoom in. I want to show you guys something. You can give me your uh, opinion on the matter. Good night, Susan. Do you see that? The liquid? That is um, the broth from the can that I guess excreted. Um, is that okay? Thank you, North Shore. Yeah, it's uh, 4.02 a.m. here. Oh, my God. Take America back. I'm making chicken salad tomorrow. I got, uh, we have onion, we have celery. I might even grate a carrot in there. Good night, Sharon. Sweet dreams on the Emerald Isle. Guys, thank you for being here. I think uh, I'm gonna call it a night. Yeah, so the ones with the liquid on top are okay. As long as the, uh, this, uh, that's a question I'm asking. The liquid on top is okay? As long as the seals stay? Okay. All right. Everybody, thank you for coming. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for your um, advice, your expertise, sharing your knowledge with me. Uh, it means a lot. It means a lot. This is could very well save me and my family's life, could feed us in a situation where we have no electricity, our freezers aren't working. Our refrigerators aren't working. Um, what are we going to do? Wait for uh, for FEMA to come and give us a you know a couple of water bottles and some some rations? No, we don't want to do that. God forbid. Hopefully, we won't have to do that. But um, the more we can, you guys see the shelf space I have downstairs. I'm going to fill it up with cans. I'm gonna, the, the food that I can buy, canned food, uh, rice, beans, things like that, I feel very comfortable and confident that that will last me uh, over a year, well over a year. But my, um, my protein that I'm gonna can slash jar is just beginning, guys. I'm gonna really, really, really um, kick it up into high gear. So we will uh, we'll be ready. We'll be ready for whatever happens, hopefully, with, with God's blessing, God's good graces, with God on our side. We will come out from, uh, from any situation if we have to quarantine, if we have to lock down. If our new president, which is pretty convinced that a uh, you know, nationwide lockdown is the answer. So if that's what's going to happen, so be it. Let's just be ready as we can. Um, and with that being said, all of you, have a good night, sleep tight, God bless you all, I appreciate you all more than, more than words can say, thank you for staying with me till, uh, till 4 a.m. in the morning, and hopefully we can do this again real soon, thanks guys, now to figure out how to end this.
Thanks, Cashew. Thanks, everybody.